Why did casino billionaire Sheldon Adelson recently host an emergency summit of pro-Israel activists in Las Vegas? To strategize on how to stop the growing movement on college campuses to boycott, divest from, and sanction the state of Israel. The BDS movement is a call from Palestinian civil society to impose non-violent measures to get Israel to comply with its obligations under international law and end its denial of Palestinian rights. The movement is loosely based off of South Africa's anti-apartheid movement in the 1970s and 80s. Now 10 years on, BDS is making some serious headway. Across college campuses, and in particular after Israel's summer 2014 war on Gaza, more and more student associations are urging their universities to stop investing in companies that operate in the Israeli-occupied Palestinian territories. In the University of California system alone, seven different student bodies passed divestment resolutions. And across the Atlantic in the UK, the National Union of Students recently voted to ally itself with the BDS campaign, something Prime Minister Netanyahu lashed out against. They boycott Israel, but they refuse to boycott ISIS. That tells you everything you want to know about the BDS movement. In the past, Israel dismissed BDS as a trivial movement, but now the country and its allies in the US are a bit more panicked and are launching full-on attacks. Netanyahu said he's preparing an offensive against the boycott efforts, calling on both the left and right within his government to stand together to fend off the attackers. And in the U.S., one of the main anti-BDS battlegrounds has been the campuses themselves. A new anonymous website called Canary Mission is naming and shaming pro-Palestine college activists with the intention of blacklisting them from jobs. Today, college campuses are filled with anti-Semitic and anti-American radicals waving Palestinian flags and placards, and screaming apartheid and murderer. But BDS activists say their tactics aren't anti-Semitic, but rather against the state of Israel's policies. Even so, a recent report shows numerous incidents of students and faculty being accused of anti-Semitism or terrorism based solely on their criticism of Israeli policy. Beyond American college campuses, anti-BDS efforts have included legislation. Illinois, South Carolina, Indiana, and Tennessee have all passed anti-BDS bills. And in Washington, D.C., bipartisan bills and amendments that would counter BDS have found their way to the House floor. But the backlash hasn't stopped the BDS movement from claiming recent victories, including on the cultural level. Like when singer Lauren Hill canceled her show in Israel in May after pressure from BDS activists. So, given all the recent triumphs and the efforts to stop them, can the BDS movement achieve what peace negotiations have long failed to? 